Hello Wobblies, I'm Chris with Wobbly Otter Outdoors and today we're making fire. So today we're going to look at 10 ways to start fire. I'm going to go through my pack and call out the ones that haven't worked for me. Your mileage may vary. First up is cotton balls coated in petroleum jelly. They're inexpensive and easy to make and the materials are readily available. All you need is cotton balls and petroleum jelly. What you do is you get a scoop full of petroleum jelly and then you swish it around on the outside of the cotton ball until the exterior is covered in it. This particular one has been made for a while so the petroleum jelly is uh, more like a waxy coating. To use it, you open up the cotton ball to expose the dry fluff that's inside. That's one of the wonderful things the petroleum jelly does is it protects the inside cotton fluff so that it doesn't get wet. The fluff inside takes a spark and burns very easily. It'll work with a ferro rod, fire steel, anything like that. Then the petroleum jelly on the outside is your fuel and it'll last for anywhere from a minute to two and a half minutes depending on how much petroleum jelly you have on the outside. Cotton balls coated with petroleum jelly are easily my favorite way of starting a fire. Those are staying in my pack. Number two, as far as creating the spark, I really like my little light my fire fire steel. The fire steel has a mix of metals in it that help it make large and many sparks. It's staying in my pack because I've used it a lot and I really like it. The third way of starting a fire is a lighter. A big lighter, a barbecue lighter, a Zippo lighter. The nice thing about these is, especially big lighters and Zippo lighters, is they're small. This one is not. They're small, they're light, and they're available in so many places. Number four is a cotton pad that is soaked in wax. We purchased these little makeup remover cotton pads. They're little cotton rounds. And we melted some regular paraffin wax and then lay the little cotton pads in the wax and it absorbed the wax. Then you let them dry and it makes a disc that is very waxy with the cotton pad on the inside. And the idea is that you open up or break the cotton pad and you can use a half or a quarter of it and you open it up to expose the fluff on the inside. Then you light the fluff. While Bill and I have been able to get this method of starting a fire to work, even with a fire steel to spark the little fluff, it's a challenge for me to get it to work consistently. Even with a flame, like with a lighter, I spend more time trying to get the fluff lit than I would if I could find some leaves or grass or, or anything else to burn. So for my pack, this one is out. Next up is a plain old cotton ball. As we've seen, a cotton ball will take a spark or any flame and readily light and it does alone even without the wax burn for just a little while. It can be a great way to get other larger tinder burning. The challenge of using a cotton ball only is if it's raining. Good way to start a fire in good conditions. Having cotton balls only without any petroleum jelly on them, not going to go in my pack. Number six is steel wool. The advantages of steel wool. It's light, it's readily available in any hardware store and you don't have to use the whole thing. You can pull off a piece of it. It takes a spark very easily. It burns fast. The steel wool is definitely staying in my pack. Number seven is fat wood. Now this particular piece is quite small. For demonstration purposes, we're showing you with a full stick of fat wood what size the little pieces need to be in order to take a spark. And what we found is that the smaller the pieces of the fat wood, the more fluffy they are, the easier they're going to take a spark. The more fat wood you have, the longer it will burn. So for me, fat wood is a keeper. Number eight is the Tac Life Electric Arc Lighter. This lighter contains a lithium ion battery that is 2600 milliamps. It's charged with any USB charger. You can recharge it up to at least 500 times and each charge gives you 1000 sparks. It has a safety. So if you have it in your pack, you don't have to worry about the button accidentally getting pressed and sparking inside there. To use it, you slide the little button cover forward and here's the button and it makes a spark. 
It's a little arc that goes across between the two probes. We've had really good luck with using this lighter. A nice thing about it is you don't have to worry about the wind with it. Because it's making such a short throw with the arc, there isn't a flame to blow out. So for me, even though it's kind of big, this is going to stay in my pack. Number nine are matches. Here we've got two sets, and both of them are little kits that are in waterproof containers. First is just regular matches. You can get Strike Anywhere matches anywhere. They're inexpensive, they're light, they work. The only times that this won't work too good is, of course, if it's raining. This particular little canister has a rubber gasket around the lid. And the striker is on the bottom. Now that's obviously not working. If it's raining or windy, it's going to be more of a challenge. Because of their ease of use and availability, I'm going to keep them in my pack. I got this as a little kit. It comes with the canister that has a rubber gasket around the top for a good watertight seal. And it has a striker on the side. When comparing a waterproof match to a regular match, a downside is that they, one, aren't readily available everywhere, and they are a little bit more expensive. The upsides are, they are waterproof. Even when it has a flame, if you submerge it in water, when you remove it from the water, it ignites again with a flame. It will continue to burn. Each stormproof match has a burn time of about 15 seconds. Stormproof matches are way cool. It makes me feel comfortable to have something that will light so easily and burn for a little bit of time even if it gets wet. These are definitely staying in my pack. Number 10 is Biofuel Fire Starters. These are by UCO. They're made with a sugarcane waste byproduct and they're infused with vegetable wax. When you receive them, there are four sticks with five tabs on it or five fire starters. I took one off, that's the one that we're showing in the test. And the way they work is you take one of the tabs off and it has a strikeable match head top that you just strike similar to a regular match. It ignites and then it burns. When I tested these out, the flame of the strikeable part was so big and flashed so much, it scared the bejeebers out of me. And during the test, it's very windy and it blew it right out. So I don't know if I waved it or the wind blew it too much or what happened, but it blew out the flame. I was able to reignite it it did take a flame to reignite it. I couldn't get it to start burning again when using the electric arc lighter. I had to use a big lighter. The nice thing about this product is it comes with its own ignition system and its own fuel source. And one of these will burn for about seven minutes. They're very light. I'm sort of on the fence about keeping these or not. Because they burn for so long, if you can ever get them started, um, they're a large surface area, so they have a nice flame. So I think I'll keep them in my pack for now. One thing that you don't see in my pack is a magnesium fuel bar. I had two of them. I had never tested them. I just purchased them, put them in my pack, figured it could be a backup source. Then I saw a video on using a magnesium fuel bar to start fires. And it said that not all of them are created equal. Some are better than others. So I tried both of mine. One was smaller and had a built-in ferro rod. And the other one was just the bar for you to scrape off and then you would ignite it with a ferro rod or a fire steel. One of them worked okay. The other fuel bar, we could barely get the shavings to light with a torch. So those aren't in my pack. I know there are good ones out there. I have plenty other ways to make fire. There'll be a link to each of these products that's available online in the video description below. Let me know your fire starting favorites. 
Thank you for watching and subscribing to Wobbly Otter Outdoors.